welcome to a segment that I have now just decided is going to be called Scorpio Kitchen with me, your favorite Scorpio. So the last time we baked cupcakes, and I'm going to do that again because why not? So the first step after your apron is to preheat your oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. Then we're going to go in with three quarters of a cup of butter, unsalted and then melted in the microwave. Then I'm going to do two thirds of a cup of sugar straight into the bowl. And then we're going to do two eggs. Look at that skill. Then you're going to do two teaspoons of vanilla extract and mix it all together. Next, we're gonna do half a cup of milk. I'm using almond milk, but you can use whatever kind of milk you would like. Then you're gonna wanna do one and a half cups of all-purpose flour. Finally, one and a half teaspoons of baking powder. Mix that all up. Make sure you don't overmix it because you don't want this to get too dense. Once you've got it all mixed together, take about a cup of your batter and put it into a separate bowl and hopefully not struggle like I did. But I got it. Into that separate bowl, you're gonna do two tablespoons of cocoa powder. Next, you're gonna get your cupcake tray, line it with 12 cupcake liners because this recipe makes 12 cupcakes. To get your batter into your cupcake liners, I would recommend getting a little cookie scoop like this. So just take one whole scoop of the vanilla batter and put it into each of your liners. For the chocolate batter, you're gonna put about half of the cookie scoop of chocolate batter into each of your cupcake liners. Now you could just leave your cupcakes like that, but they wouldn't be marble cupcakes if we didn't mix them. So I'm going to take a little toothpick and blend the chocolate and the vanilla together until you get sort of a swirly pattern. Pop those into the oven for 18 to 20 minutes and take out when done. Alrighty, so what I have here is half a cup of melted milk chocolate chips, which I put into a Ziploc bag and cut a little tip into. I've got a silicone baking sheet and I am just piping the chocolate on in the shape of music notes. So I have a couple treble clefs and a couple of regular music notes. Once you've piped those on, just set them aside and let them dry while we make the icing. All right, it is several hours later. My cupcakes have been cooled, so we're gonna start the icing. I'm adding four cups of icing sugar to one cup room temperature butter, two tablespoons of maple syrup. And you don't see me doing it, but I also added in three tablespoons of almond milk. I'm gonna mix that all up. Now I'm going to use an ice cream scoop to scoop my buttercream frosting into my piping bag fitted with a piping tip. Alrighty, so now you're just gonna take your icing and pipe circles onto your cupcakes until you reach a peak. Repeat that for all of your cupcakes. And you don't see me do it, but I took the set chocolate music notes and I put them on top of the cupcakes once I was done icing them. And that's literally all there is to it. This couldn't be any easier. Uh, they look delicious, and they are delicious. I recommend that you give them a try yourself. The chocolate is much less intimidating than it seems. I promise you that. I'm Noelle Slaney. I'm a soprano from Centerville, Newfoundland. Um, I did my undergrad and my master's at Memorial University in vocal performance. And right now I am completing a second master's degree in opera performance at the University of Toronto. Leah Petal and I'm a second year voice major at Memorial University and I study with Shelley Neville. My name is Matthew Fillier. I'm 21 years old and uh, currently I'm studying at the School of Music doing a double major in music and business. My name is Holly Winter. I am currently based in St. John's, Newfoundland. I am a composer and music teacher. I did my undergraduate degree at MUN. I graduated in 2020. It's a great year. And uh, I'm now doing remotely my master's in music composition at UBC in Vancouver, but I'm physically still here. Hello, my name is Anna Mercer. I am a second year voice major at Mun School of Music right now under the guidance of Dr. Jane Liable. I'm Adam Wicks. I'm a fifth year uh, music student at Mun. My name is Kathleen O'Rourke, and my dream role is Christine Daae from Phantom of the Opera. 
I've loved the musical ever since I first heard about it. And honestly, it's just such a beautiful and compelling story. I'd love to be a part of it one day. My dream role. So I'm gonna be singing a song from the musical, Broadway musical movie, Anastasia, and the song will be Journey to the Past. And this is my dream role because I've loved Anastasia for years. I just, I fell in love with the movie and the musical and all the songs and I just, it would be my dream to play her and sing the songs. I remember when I was really little, I started out really wanting to learn how to play the piano. Uh, and that's all I could talk about. So I really wanted to do piano lessons. And then my parents noticing that I would sing a whole lot, um, wanted to put me in voice lessons as well. And I kicked up a fuss. I didn't want to do it because I thought it was boring. <laughs> and now I've completed an undergrad degree and uh, I'm working on my second master's in opera. So I guess it was a good thing that they made me do voice lessons. <laughs> what motivated me to get involved with music and the arts, like in general, was my family, especially my mom's side. They're all like really musical. And they had me like performing like in church or in like, local festivals when I was like, I think the earliest was like two and a half. I got up and I could hardly like talk really, you know, but that really influenced me. All my music teachers growing up were always like, you know, you have to do music, you know, like it's your passion. You should do it for a career. And so, you know, I've had a lot of support, but yeah, I think that's what really motivated me to get started. For a large part of my life, uh, I've been involved with choirs, uh, starting at a really young age, uh, around grade three, I started singing in boy choirs with the churches in town. Uh, and just ever since, like, I've been really involved with all the theater programs and just singing in schools. So uh, I, I think that's really kept with me my entire life. And that's what's, uh, that's what's given me the motivation to continue with it. I've always been in the arts. Both my parents are arts professionals. So my mom is a uh, set and costume and projection designer, as well as an administrator for the theater in Toronto. My dad worked in film. It was sort of just sort of natural that I would be involved. I was very involved in theater and musical theater as a young person. Well, I... Like I said, I came from a musical family, and so I was surrounded by music my whole life. And uh, my parents put me in piano lessons when I was like, I think kindergarten, something like that. And so I was playing piano for my whole life. I just, that didn't stop. And so then I started voice lessons in grade four, grade three. And then I started with the Kiwanis Music Festival, and it kind of like took off. I loved it. Like I was, it was such the, the I guess the, com like the competition within, it was like very, made me very driven. I, I didn't really have any interest in, in music. I didn't start being involved with music until I think I was 17, 16 or 17. It was in grade 11 while I was at Gonzaga in, in St. John's. Uh, I had been put into a position where I didn't have a whole lot of close friends uh, it, halfway through that year of school. And one of the few friends that I did have was a guitarist. And he would spend a lot of his time in the music room at our school, which was thankfully opened to students during lunch. That was great. So thank you, Mr. Cooper and Mr. Ms. Sheila Ryan. <laughs> That's great. Thank you for keeping that open. And through him and, and through staying at, at, the, at, that, at that room in the school, I, I met a bunch of other musicians, uh, amateur musicians at the time, but a lot of them went on to study at Memorial. And it was kind of through them that I got motivated to, to at least start doing something musically. So we got map. And I'm the map, 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 I think mine from Dora was better. Um, map, I'm the map, I'm the map. Like five grade. Um, five grade. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Five. Um, 
If you change your mind, take a chance, 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 take Cause you asked for it, cause you need one. one. You see, I'm not gonna write you a love song. I I love you like a love, love song, baby. I I love you like a love song, baby. <laughs> Next up is Dream. I have a dream. That's the song I was trying to sing. Of fantasy. I have a song. That's that's the one. To okay. help um. me go. I don't think there's a point to game anymore. Let's just yeah, keep playing. I forgot. I, don't, I have not been adding things up. So, oopsies. Um, chain. chain. And if you don't love me now, you will never love me again. I can still hear you saying you would never break the chain. Yeah. Okay. That's nuts. Okay. All right. I was going to yeah. like sing. I don't know what I was going to sing. What's. Is there a song about me? Okay. 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 Okay, next word. <laughs> no. No? Snow. Snow. Yeah. Let it snow, let it snow, let it snow. Let, let it snow. Okay. Oh, wait, that's not go. <laughs> let it go. Half empty, half full. Cup runneth over. Horns of plenty, coffers full. We're starting over
those doubts happen pretty much every day. It's, it can be anything from, I don't know, if you did an audition and you didn't get the part or you didn't get into a program, um, you always have those doubts of like, okay, am I doing enough? Am I good enough? Um, and if you've ever listened to yourself as you're practicing or listened back to recordings, it's like, oh, is that actually, like, is that good enough to do this, you know? Um, but I'd say what keeps me motivated is the dedication to the process. I mean, people, there is a bit of a, like, a stereotype. They think that a lot of people think that music is really easy and they don't realize, like, all the practice and everything, that everything behind the scenes, like, we do class and we practice and we perform and it's just so much. I have relatives that have, that have their music degrees finished. So that's really, you know, they're, they tell me that they struggled and they kept going. And, and I really think that it's a really, really good first degree to have. So like, I keep that in mind whenever I get, you know, down and, and overcome with so much stuff. I've definitely experienced doubt. Um, I'd say the worst of it wasn't when I've been in music school, but it was when I was in high school. I, I went through a period where I kind of was like, you know, I don't think that doing a music degree is going to be for me. So I spent a few years, the first couple of years I was at Mon, uh, just doing some general, I uh, tried psychology, police studies, wasn't really feeling it. So I decided to audition for music school and, uh, and I'm just loving it. I'm loving every second of it. And I'm, I couldn't be happier. I experience uh, doubt or as uh, psychologists call it imposter syndrome very regularly. I think it's really common to feel this way in all disciplines, but especially in music. It's hard not to sort of compare yourself to other people and see what they're doing and feel like, oh, I'll never be able to do that. Or, you know, that they're just so talented. How am I in the same program as them? But what really sort of kept me going, I had a really supportive applied teacher who always told us like, you have to, you know, don't compare yourself to others, compare yourself to yourself from a year ago and see how far you've come. I have absolutely in, encountered doubt within my, so far within my degree. Oftentimes with courses and rehearsal and making it to different events and things overlapping and not having time to study and things like that was definitely a big burden on some days. So this didn't happen very often, but I would I'll always rely on my peers to motivate me to continue with the week because it's always, I work by week. Everybody does. And so uh, also my family, my parents are very, very, very supportive within my journey and um, my profs as well. And my lovely voice teacher, Jane, she's the most positive person you will ever meet and would never utter a word of negativity. And so she is definitely a big influence. Over the course of a couple months, you know, things started creeping up to like either things like about like your competence as, as a musician, realizing, oh, well, maybe if, I do, if I'm not experiencing a whole lot of success with this, maybe I should move on to something else, or maybe I'm not doing it right, or maybe it's not for, meant for me. Um, maybe I don't like this a whole lot. Maybe the reason that I'm not doing particularly well in it is because I, I don't think I really do like this because it's so, it's like such a small conception of what music is like studying in, a, in a, an institution like this, where it's like heavily focused on Western art music. So there are a lot of doubts as to whether or not I fit into that, like what my particular musical interests are and whether they fit that category. Hi, welcome or welcome back to Stupid History, a segment where I tell you funny stories from our existence as humans that your history teacher is far too embarrassed to tell you. Today, we're going back to the classical period, specifically Vienna, Austria. Now, if that all sounds familiar to you, it should, because we are going to be talking about one of the most well-known classical composers of all time, Beethoven. Now, we all know a lot about Beethoven, so I'm not going to go too much into his history, but I am going to be telling you a little bit about a man named Daniel Steibelt. Steibelt was referred to as a most unvirtuous virtuoso, well known during his day for spreading false rumors, cheating, stealing money from concert receipts, sleeping with married women, and among other things, telling everyone he met, even announcing before and after his concert recitals, that Beethoven was a hack performer and scared of him. Now, Beethoven didn't really care about what Steibelt was saying didn't mean much to him. Steibelt was not important to him. 
until May 1800, when Stiebelt challenged Beethoven to a piano duel. Now, if you know anything about Beethoven, you know that that is a terrible idea on Stiebelt's part. But he did it. He traveled to Vienna for the sole purpose of beating Beethoven at his own game. The first round of the duel was whatever piece the performer wanted to play by anyone, and thus the performers chose the most technically difficult piece they knew. Beethoven played a sonata by Mozart, and Stiebelt played one by Haydn. The second round was a two piano contest of alternating improvisations on themes each performer would give the other, where they had to improv them and make them up on the spot. Beethoven soundly won this one. The third and final round was the most important for testing the true genius of a performer. Each performer would sight read a new piece written by the challenger. Stiebelt went first, playing Beethoven's brand new piano sonata in B flat major. He did well enough, garnering a good amount of applause after his improvisations. Watchers claim that Beethoven rolled his eyes at the applause. Stiebelt tried to trip Beethoven up by giving him a new cello sonata for cello and piano. Well, this is technically a breach of rules, but Beethoven was not going to win on a technicality alone. He took the score, turned it upside down on the music rack, and sight read it backwards, then improvised on one of its themes for 30 minutes. Stiebelt was thoroughly destroyed, which he knew and didn't wait for Beethoven to finish. He walked out and never met with Beethoven ever again. So the ultimate goal is to perform in some capacity. Um, originally, I thought that was going to be, you know, I, I get into the yap and I um, start performing at an opera house, but you know, it's not as clear cut as that. So just, um, having a successful performing career and, you know, like the teaching and everything on the side is something that is really useful because it's just, it, it, it keeps you busy with the freelancing and everything. So just having my hands in a couple different pots is really exciting. My career goals uh, after I graduate are still up in the air a little bit. Um, I'm doing a comprehensive major, so I'm working towards education. So that could be an option to teach music or I'm also doing English minor. So to teach English as well. Um, a lot of people and like my doctor included um, did music and then they did medicine. So that's something I'm thinking about. I graduate. Uh, I really hope to get into med school. And uh, if all goes well, I work for the Canadian Armed Forces as a medical officer. I uh, originally went into music school wanting to be a teacher, be a music educator. I decided that that wasn't exactly the path I wanted to take for myself, at least initially. It's still an option there. I still love teaching. I tutor and I teach uh, privately a lot, but I really got into sort of new music and creating like compositions uh, at MUN. And so I applied, even though I hadn't been composing that long, I comply, applied to master's programs. I got into three of the four most prestigious master's programs in the country, which is pretty exciting. Uh, I'm now going to UBC and I hope to continue be, to be a composer and to collaborate with, um, with great, I, what I love about being a composer is that you get to work with musicians and write things for musicians and, and have this collaborative creation process that's really inspiring. So I hope to continue to be able to do that and teach composition and theory and clarinet. My career goals, uh, as of now, I come from a family with, of teachers. My grandparents were teachers, my parents are teachers. So that is the route that has taken me. And so by my, cho my own choice, but I've always had a love for children and for music. And so it's just so fitting. Is to graduate. So that, that's, ba that's where my, uh, my attention stops. Uh, when I went into music, I, my, my thoughts were, okay, I'm going to do uh, my degree on euphonium and then I will, I will teach. I'll go into education. And then promptly within, <clears throat> I don't know, I'd say like two or three months, uh, I, I had, did not want to do education anymore. Uh, the public school system, uh, none of that entices me whatsoever. My goal, career goal, I guess right now is I, I've done a lot of searching for what it is that interests me musically regarding like Western art music. So, and, and what, what does is uh, ensemble singing. That's extremely fun. So I, I really like 
engaging with those kinds of things. And thankfully there's, there's enough around St. John's that I can, I can do that. Lilia, lovely to chat with you today. I'm Jane Leibel, and I am a professor of voice at uh, the School of Music at Memorial. I have the best job in the world because I get to work with enthusiastic, incredibly talented, wonderful young students that inspire me at every single lesson. So it's, uh, yeah. It's not a job, it's, a, it's an extraordinary profession and avocation. Well, like you, I have an amazing family, incredible parents that always uh, pointed the way forward and they knew that I had this great love of music and so they uh, generously put me into piano lessons and voice lessons and uh, just always were my greatest cheerleaders and with that came uh, a connection, a connectivity with your hive and and it was something that came easily. So of course, like that's where you are, your whole life is, okay, that seems where I need to go. And I just loved it so much that I just uh, kept going on that path. And I had incredible, generous mentors that just kept opening doors for me. So I was incredibly blessed. Yeah, I'd say it started with the family and teachers and on it went. I knew that it was going to be a lifelong challenge because you can never learn the entire uh, canon of music that exists for your instrument. And there were so many different styles and um, and I knew that with every generation, uh, like as you get older, your voice, um, it, it's going to change. And so I thought, wow, I will never be bored. I will always be incredibly challenged. And I loved working with, uh, with vocal coaches. So I love the process of working with the teacher. Um, and I... I didn't mind uh, failure and like when things didn't work, it would just make you dig down deeper and just figure out in my sandbox, what do I need to do in order to release my voice? So I just knew that it was gonna be a lifelong quest and it wasn't a short, finite, okay, I do this degree and then I go work in, in an office and it's just sort of that for the rest of my career. So I knew that it was going to be a big, long, exciting, challenging journey. And, uh, and I'd be able to um, continue to uh, collaborate with uh, incredibly talented, smart people. Yeah, and it just felt right. Well, you know, if I could say to my younger self, I kind of like to flip that of, if you really want this, you love the process. Like you really have to love the work that you do. And it can't just be the end game of, I just want to perform. I just want that opening night. Sure, yeah, of course. But the real nitty gritty of building your voice and finding freedom and finding release, like you really have to love the work. Like look at it as like if you're going into medicine, you have to like be a real geek and nerd. And I love how the human body works and I want to study that. Well, it's the same thing. It's just loving the daily process and intentionality of finding it every day. And there will be times when you just feel, ugh, ugh, this isn't working. That's okay. Like that's part of it. And um, 
If you have this desire and passion, pay attention to it. Don't squelch it. There's a reason that this, you've got that fire inside of you and you have to find, you know, you don't really have to find your path. I think that if you stay dedicated within your process, I swear to God, Lilia, the path finds you. Because I wrote this huge script for my life of, I was going to do blah, 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 blah. And, and in some ways, a lot of that stuff happened. But in many ways, a lot didn't. Plan A didn't pan out. But plan B showed up because I was so engaged in the process and I wanted it so much. So maybe I didn't get exactly what I wanted, but all of a something else showed up and it was magic, like absolute magic. For example, at the end of my doctoral studies, it was my plan to stay in the States. I mean, I had a visa and I, I had a job lined up and, uh, and I loved where I was living in Ann Arbor. It's like this beautiful piece of paradise and the weather's exquisite and yada, yada, yada. It's like I just, I was at home there. And a friend of mine phoned me and said, did you know that there's a job in St. John's at Memorial University in Newfoundland. And I'm from the prairies. So of course I knew where Atlantic Canada was, but I tell you, I had to like grab out a map and go, oh my God, right, that province, like way east and north, like further north of New York on that Atlantic border. And I thought, sure, I'll apply. What the heck? It will be an adventure. It was just an eight month contract. And I thought if nothing else, I'll just practice auditioning for jobs. Right? So the rest is history. 21 years later, I've got the best life in the world. My colleagues are my dearest friends. I've just got these incredible souls that just keep coming through the door and just are so open and want it so badly. And to see 21 years of kids, you know, whether they stuck with music and became a teacher or a lawyer or a doctor. I mean, the great thing about this, um, this study is that uh, you have to be, have self-motivation and um, professional schools love music students you know so nursing pharmacy medicine dentistry law because you just have to have this keep my head down and work and do the work and love the work Goodbye to you.